So I'm going to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation whereby we're using the coefficient k sub 1 to be squared. So we can write it here or we can bring everything to the left hand side and have a homogeneous equation. If I want to be kind of fastidious I can note explicitly that we have a zero coefficient on the first derivative term. So we have no first, first derivative. And this sort of differential equation can be solved using what's known as the characteristic equation. And that's what I'm going to show you how to use right now. So if we have a second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients that is of the form on the top left of your screen, we can use the characteristic equation. The important point to note here is that we have a coefficient of 1. a must always be 1. So if it, for some reason you have some other uh, coefficient there, you must divide across by it to make sure that a is equal to 1. Now, if you have this form of a differential equation, you can solve the characteristic equation. And that's what I have on the top right of your screen. Basically, we make a quadratic equation in lambda, and we use the coefficients a, b, and c from our differential equation. Well, solving quadratic equations is very straightforward. So the solution is going to be given by minus b outside of plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over twice a. Now, most generally, lambda is a complex number. In other words, it has a real part, what I'm going to call alpha, and an imaginary part, which I'm going to call beta. All of this will depend on basically whether or not b squared is greater than or equal to 4ac. If b squared is greater than or equal to 4ac, then we're always going to have a real solution. In other words, beta is going to be zero. But sometimes 4ac is going to be greater than b squared. And what that will mean is that you'll have a you'll have a, an imaginary component. So beta will be non-zero. And you'll see, of course, with the time-independent Schrodinger equation, because b is going to be zero, you're always going to get an imaginary solution, but also the real component is going to be zero. Either way, once you solve your characteristic equation, you get the solutions lambda, which is a complex number. What you do is you take the real component alpha and you put it as the exponent of a real exponential. You take the imaginary component beta and you put it as the argument of a linear combination of cosines and sines a cos beta x plus b sine beta x. And this is the general solution to a second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. Which means this is exactly the solution to our time independent Schrodinger equation. So let's do it. So on the top left of your screen I've written for completeness what we need to have or how we need to have the, uh, the time independent Schrodinger equation. That's here. That's what we have. Uh, because it's written on the top right of your screen. Or we can basically get rid of the first derivative term just for neatness. And I've noted explicitly what the coefficients are. This time we're just going to talk about k sub 1 to be squared. So plug all of those in and you'll find that of course b is going to be 0. And that means we're going to get a purely imaginary solution. In other words, the solution is going to be plus or minus i times k. k sub 1, in fact. So alpha is going to be 0, and beta is going to be plus or minus k sub 1. I'm sure now you realize why we noted the constants as k sub 1 to be squared rather than k sub 1. It's for this step exactly here. So we're basically done at this point. We have the solution lambda to our characteristic equation here. It's a complex number. And what we do is we put the real component in as the exponent of a, of a real exponential and we put the imaginary component in as our cosines and sines argument. Well, that's what I've written here in English really. And of course, when we use k sub 1 to be squared, we find that the real component alpha is going to be 0 and the imaginary component beta is plus or minus k sub 1. And here's our solution. We put 0, which is at the real component alpha, as the argument of our exponential. So e to the naught is going to be 1. That term is simply going to go away. Then we're going to have two constants a and b. 
multiplied by cosine k sub 1 x and sine k sub 1 x. And this is the solution to your differential equation, whereby we have to find k sub 1 to be squared as 2m outside of e minus v over h bar to be squared. So when you've your time independent Schrodinger equation of this form with the plus k sub 1 to be squared, the solution is a linear combination of cosines and sines of k sub 1 x. Of course, I'm sure you realize k sub 1 is going to be the wave number and you can get the wavelength because k sub 1 is twice pi over lambda. And that's it. Now, I'm very sure you'll be looking at this and going, there are a lot of steps to this, but in reality there aren't because you rewrite the Schrodinger equation in either this form or in an alternative form where we have a minus k sub 2 to be squared, let's say, and thereafter you simply write down the solution. So if I see a differential equation of this form, I immediately write down a linear combination of cosines and sines. And if I have a if I have a negative term here, I write down a linear combination of real exponentials. And I'll show you where that comes from in a moment. By the way, of course, cosine and sine can be equivalently written as complex exponentials.